And with the Queen's State funeral happening earlier today, many traditions and customs were on full display for the world to see. To go over some of those traditions, we're joined live over Zoom with Andrew Walkling, who is a British historian and works over at Binghamton University. Good evening, Andrew. Hi, Rhea. Thanks for having me on. Of course. So one of the many things that have stuck out to viewers here at home was after the funeral service took place, Royal Navy soldiers pulled the gun cart that carried the Queen during the first part of her procession. Why is that? Well, you know, it's an interesting thing about ceremonies like this. Some of the elements are extremely old, dating back to the 14th century, but some of them are relatively new. Uh, in fact, what happened is that in 1901, when Queen Victoria died, uh, the transportation broke down and they had to pull in some Navy uh, sailors on very short notice to pull the gun uh, carriage forward. So all of a sudden that became a tradition. Edward VII, who succeeded Victoria as king, decided that it looked really good and they'd done such a good job that they would continue the tradition. Wow, that is so interesting. And at the funeral services at Westminster Abbey, a lone bagpiper played to close out the ceremony. Could you tell us a little bit about the significance of him playing? We heard he had a close tie to the Queen. Yes, this is a, a person, a position known as the Queen's Piper. And part of his job is to wake the Queen up every morning. He literally serves as a kind of alarm clock. Uh, and plays his bagpipes under her window for 15 minutes every morning, or while she was alive, of course. Um, and so there's a very close personal connection. And those uh, of your viewers who may have watched the entire ceremony today will have seen that he performed both at the funeral at Westminster Abbey and at the uh, committal at Windsor uh, castle later on. And in both cases, he played and slowly walked away so that the bagpipe faded, the sound faded. It was kind of a saying goodbye to Her Majesty. Wow. So her personal live alarm clock, and then he was there <laughs> in her final moments. Wow. How meaningful is that? So with the world saying goodbye to the Queen, all eyes now turn to King Charles. So what happens now? And, and we know nothing has been released formally, but when do you expect to see a coronation for the new king? Well, it usually takes some time because a coronation requires a lot of planning. Um, I don't know exactly when it will be, obviously. I expect it'll be sometime next year. Um, a traditional date that was often used for royal coronations was the 23rd of April, which is the Feast of St. George, who is the patron saint of England. Uh, but we have no idea at the moment what kind of date they'll choose, but it'll be some time before it actually occurs. All right, Andrew, we'll be looking forward to that. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. And NBC 